So especially for those, my class, we just were in a good place for lecture as for the calendar, but we're going to dig into integration. You have to know all of this, right? Because it's all a map and the map has to do with uh, pathways, Sem uh, sensory up, motor down. Okay, so make sure you knock this out for the points in lab and for the comprehension and points in lecture. All right, so I've been really hammering that. Uh, okay, so that's what we have here. So remember, this is the receptor, wherever is the neuron that's going to respond to stimulus, which we talked about in lecture. If you're not with me, it's the same with you. You should have talked about that in lecture. And then again, the afferent neuron has to do with the neuron going towards this uh, spinal cord, which in this case, it, all afferent neurons are going to be sensory because that's... That's what it is. Sensory goes in. In this case, because the effector, the end, the end, kind of the end organ there is skeletal, it's it's somatic sensory, voluntary coming in, and it's somatic motor, voluntary going out, right? So with the reflex, that autonomic, involuntary, somatic, voluntary is dependent on what muscle it's going to. Technically, cardiac is also involuntary, and so is the um, gland, but really what we're talking about, and you can see this with the Babinski reflex and also the, pupil uh, the pupillary reflex. I said papillary, pupillary reflex. Those are going to, well, no. Babinski is skeletal, it's your foot. Pupillary is going to be around the muscles around your eye, which are uh, smooth muscle. Anything where the effector or the end muscle is going to be smooth, that is going to be an autonomic. So don't let it confuse you. Reflexes are locally generated and sustained uh, pathways. Yes, Gloria. So for the reflexes, basically all we're going to be doing is short answer. Exactly. Now, when I say short answer, it's like short answer. You know what I mean? Because the answers we do in lab, you're like the way that I always reference it in lab, you're given a piece of paper. And that piece of paper has like 70 questions, like 35 on one side, 35 on the other. And it's like a, an inch, an inch and a half of a line that you're given. So we never expect you to be writing sentences here, right? For example, the analogy would be what function does this, what function does the brachialis do? Flexion at the elbow. Boom, done. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's the level of response that we're talking about. Like we might ask about for, we might ask about, is this what, we probably, it'd probably be a lecture question, but we could ask about, is the pupillary reflex autonomic or what type of, what type of reflex is this? I don't know if we'd say autonomic, but then you, you, one of the answers might be, depending on the question, autonomic reflex, right? So we're really looking for something that straightforward. It's not going to be like a sentence driven thing. So by short answer, it's like super short. So I hope that that makes sense. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you're like, again, when you read this, like um, the pupillary reflex, it's very common. What does it talk about? It talks about bilateral. Does it say bilateral? Pupillary reflex is bilateral, FYI. Remember, we have contralateral across the body, ipsilateral on the same side of the body, and bilateral, whatever happens on one side, happens on the other. That's what the bi means. So that's it. All right, awesome. So that's really kind of the, that's the idea here um, for these reflexes. That's why I'm like, read it in your lab manual and you're good because that's where the information is going to be kind of taken from. All right, awesome. So that's what we're looking at today. Okay, so here's our reflex arc. Um, all right, guys, you guys know this. Why? Because we did the microscope slide already. So basically the same stuff applies. So I want you to put an, I want you to, Put a line, uh, no, circle the receptor for me. Circle the receptor for me. This is the receptor that's going to recognize a change in stimuli. It's the first part. Exactly. So wherever those, <laughs> I guess, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> so yes, those, those branching off parts, those are the, the receptors. That's going to respond to the change in stimulus. It could be, t it could be pressure, light pressure, deep pressure, right? Uh, a Meisner corpuscle, a Merkel corpuscle, uh, Merkel, um, mm, do they just call it a Merkel cell? I know they call it the tactile cell. Okay, thank you. I was like, hmm. And then it could be a Piscinian. Thank you, Melinda. I appreciate it. And then, or it could be a Piscinian slash lamellar corpuscle, right? So these are different receptors in the skin, the integumentary system, that are going to respond to this. So, but here, notice that they don't ask for those names, right? I'm giving you a little bit more kind of, I'm kind of filling in a little bit with lecture here. If I, you know, if I've got a couple seconds, I might as well. But I do want you to focus on the terminology here. So if, 
we're going to ask just for the receptor. We're not asking which receptor it is because guess what? It's not there. Whatever is on the list, stick with the list. Don't make it complicated. Don't, don't make it, don't go outside of the list. Just say, this is it. That's what I need to know. And that's it. If we put a bracket around there, a circle, we point to these, this area here, any of these, you know, cells here or branching off of this, this pathway, it's receptor. That's all you put. Why? Because that's all that's here. I'm just kind of adding to that, which I might not do. I just want to, I don't want to confuse it, but reinforcing lecture is not a bad thing. Anyway, we got a lot to do. So tell me about the afferent neuron. Trace a path along the afferent neuron. It's basically an axon, right? Trace a path through that afferent neuron. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome. Now, this one we could ask in a number of ways. We could put an arrow on that, and I want you to say afferent neuron, right? Why? Because that's in the that's in the list. Again, list, 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 right? This is it. Everything here as per this list. So if you tell me, if we point to that or we put a bracket in that area, right, like here, we put a bracket like here or we put it like a, a thing over here, right? This reflex arc, there isn't any dorsal root, right? So, you know, probably we, we put it over here to avoid any confusion. But that's the afferent neuron. Why? Afferent means towards the CNS. Now, this is test three material. All right, guys. Awesome integration neuron if you like association neuron better i don't care i like integration it's easier that's it boom it's the neuron we call we call this neuron an, an interneuron i don't know why they call it integration it's fine so i guess probably because it's a reflex and it's local and it remains here primarily so this is going to be the integration neuron exactly it's the neuron between the afferent pathway which is sensory and the efferent pathway which is motor now put a line on the efferent pathway the efferent neuron they don't call it pathway they call it neuron yep just follow it along boom 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 got it got it got it that's what i'm talking about how do you know that well we've been talking about that for a long time right efferent is going to be going out from the cns to the pns right we know that and here we've got the effector. So circle the effector. Yes, actually the whole muscle would be the effector. Exactly. Now, this effector is skeletal muscle. Is this pathway, is this reflex, um, is it voluntary or is it involuntary, autonomic? Which one is this? Voluntary or involuntary? It's voluntary because the effector is the skeletal muscle. Boom. Okay, awesome. Now, for those of you who are like, wow, dude, I was not following that. Um, somatic, um, yes, yes, you can use somatic, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, somatic, voluntary. So, Shannon, that's an excellent point. You want to associate somatic with voluntary because it can be somatic sensory and somatic motor voluntary sensory voluntary motor yes uh motor can be either remember motor can be to a gland to the cardiac to smooth muscle but the difference there is whether it's going to skeletal or gland cardiac uh smooth muscle so it actually is different because you can be motor and you don't know if it's voluntary or involuntary. It depends on where that's going. So if it's going to skeletal muscle, it means it's somatic motor or voluntary motor. If, the, if this pathway is going to smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, or a gland, it is an involuntary slash autonomic, right? Kind of, we use either of those terms. Aha, aha, aha. Good, Brisa. Yes, because it does. That's why it gets a little tricky because it's like, Sensory is going in and motors going out. Sensory can be either voluntary or involuntary. It depends where it's coming from, right? For example, if the information is coming from um, the heart, well, that's going to be an involuntary pathway, right? If it's coming from the mus from the skin, it's going to be a voluntary pathway. Remember, T T triple P is voluntary, right? Touch, temperature, pain, pressure, proprioception functionally because it goes to skeletal muscle and also it's um also we're going to see later which in chapter 20 uh exercise 20 the special senses specifically eye and ear are also voluntary right because you have because you have the skeletal muscles that move the eye 
Okay. Now the pupillary muscles, that's different. That is a motor output when it goes to the muscle, but it goes to smooth muscle, which makes it motor, but it makes it autonomic. Yes. So there is a distinction there. It, it matters. Basically sensory goes up, motor goes down. It could be either voluntary or involuntary. Voluntary is also called somatic. That's why you got to knock this out, guys, because it, it gets a little tricky as we start building. All right, guys. Awesome. That's it. Now, I'm going to go over this for some people who are like, I don't know what's happening. Um, so here's the receptor. I'm going from top to, uh, first word um, down the reflex arc. But again, guys, you really should know this from the previous classes and lecture and also the spinal cord uh, slide. All right, so this is the receptor. This is the afferent neuron because it's going towards the spinal cord. Afferent neuron is also a, called sensory, okay? But they want you to know afferent. They're gonna say afferent. They're going to say afferent neuron. You have to know it's sensory. It's gonna go through the dorsal root, okay? Uh, integration neuron, that's the part in the middle here, okay? And then we're gonna have an outgoing motor uh, efferent neuron. That's the efferent neuron. This whole motor pathway is here. And then the effector, the effector is the organ that's going to be affected. And that's, in this case, skeletal muscle. If it's skeletal muscle, it's a somatic pathway or voluntary. Same thing. You got to keep them together because in lecture, we'll use both. Or we'll just describe the effector. The effector is a skeletal muscle. And you have to say, aha, that's voluntary. Aha, that's somatic. Okay, awesome. But that's it for us. All right, now this one is going to be spinal cord cross X. So scoot over to the left of page 150, and this is the spinal cord cross X. Cross X basically just means a cross section. And we end up looking like down on it. So basically, I take a transverse cut, pop off the top of it, and look down. And that's what we call cross X. Um, all right, guys. So uh, I'm going to go from the top to the bottom. All right, I want the interior column. Now, if you put interior white column, I don't care because in some places we ask for the interior white column. So I'm not going to care about that because I don't want you guys to be like, oh my God, really? So give me an X for the interior white column. Yes, because the fissure, right guys? The anterior median fissure. Also, that is dorsal. Remember, dorsal means posterior. Right? Awesome. That's what I want. Good. Boom, boom, boom. We're going down. Um, you already, if you know posterior, you know anterior, you know lateral. So I'm not going to, you know what I mean? It's okay. Gray horns. I like the posterior gray horn. Go up a little bit more on the butterfly. Yeah, that's right. Like the peninsula. Very good. That's right. Now let's, let's do, oh, well, let's do the central canal because we're here. Central canal. It's just the hole in the middle. Boom, that's it. All right, ready, guys? This is good because it helps you to orient around posterior and anterior. Posterior median sulcus. Yes, right there. That's the line that they're going to they're gonna point to. Good, 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 good. Now, be careful. Be careful. They're going to point to that line. They're not going to point to this area here, which we've got the posterior white columns, right? We're going to keep that line. We're going to point to the line which is the posterior median sulcus. All right, guys, anterior median fish, uh, fissure. That's it. Now, this one has a nice little, you know, nice little butt crack, if you will. All right, awesome. Um, ventral, wait, sorry, ventral root. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Just that part right there, either side, right or left, doesn't matter, because we have a pair. All right, uh, dorsal root. Yes, that's right. Exactly. Good. Boom, boom, boom. That's what I'm talking about. Awesome. Now, we've done this before with the microscope slide, guys. So, again, that's why you got to knock it out week for week. All right. And then, where is the dorsal root ganglia? That also helps you, but sometimes you can't see it on the slide. Dorsal root ganglia. Yep, it's that bold part. It bumps out. Now, just for kicks, what? write down what, um, what cell is in there. Go over to the microscope slide and look at that. Now, what's, what cell is in there? Now, it's true, this, but that's the part of the cell. What type of cell is in the dorsal root ganglia? Unipolar. That's right. That's right. So just make sure. Now, that's, that's not part of this list. We're not going to ask it on this list, so I probably shouldn't have asked it. But that will be on the microscope list. The cells in the dorsal root ganglion, yes, they're the soma. They're the body. But the type of cells are unipolar neurons. But it doesn't ask for that on this list. All right, guys. Let's keep going. 
Um, uh, we did the gut. spinal nerve. Now, don't get confused. Remember, dorsal root, ventral root come together and form that nerve. That's it. That's it. That's your nerve, right? So don't get confused. Guys, everybody pay attention. Stop what you're doing. Look at, the, look at your computer. Do not get confused with this. This is, this is going to, well, I'm going to move off of that. This is the dorsal root. Okay, I'm trying to stay away from the dorsal root ganglion so there's no confusion. This is the ventral root. Okay, this is the spinal nerve. I don't want you to lose points because you're, you didn't quite get the distinction. You guys with me? The, the ventral root and the dorsal root come together into one big kind of nerve. And that's what we call a spinal, a pair of spinal nerves. We've got 31 of them. All right, guys, that makes sense? So tell me again, where is the spinal nerve? And they want spinal nerve. So if you, yes, if we point to that area and you tell me dorsal root or ventral root, you're wrong. And I just want you to make sure that you're on top of these distinctions. Okay, guys, it's not hard, but I want you to notice the difference. Because, again, there's always a couple points because we're human. We're going to make mistakes like that. But you know you want to minimize those because they're frustrating. Because you know the material. Watch these little pitfalls. Awesome. Jio. All right. Pia matter. All the way around. Now, we've got to be careful how we ask that, right? Because it's basically this. It's just, yeah, exactly, exactly. Just on the outside. And then gray and white matter. Guys, put an X on the gray matter for me. That's weird. How are, how are they going to do that? I don't know. I don't know how they do that because here it says gray and white matter. I don't know. Ugh. That's not good. Okay, guys, they have to be, don't worry about this one. Just know that they might just, guys, listen up, listen up. Now, read the question because we've got gray horn questions. We've got columns. Columns are white matter. Gray horns are gray matter. So, Make sure you read the question because if they want gray and white matter, they might ask something specific, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't want you to not read the question carefully and give me anterior white column when all they're asking for is gray matter and white matter. So just watch those questions. Double check. Watch your timing, but you've got enough time. You've got 90 minutes, right? So you got to keep your time. Don't stress yourself out and read the questions, right? Probably read it again before you move on to the next one. All right, awesome. It's a good technique. All right, guys, we're done. Boom. Reflex arc model, done. Spinal cord cross X, done. Now we're going to go to, uh, that's just an up close door, but same thing. Okay, now we're going to go to this. This is the spinal cord and the vertebra. Why? Because this is the vertebra. <laughs> right? Now, this one has a couple little tricky parts to it. First of all, we're going to do the vertebra because they want you to do the vertebra. So the body of the vertebra, right, is this, that. Body of the vertebra. Boom, boom, boom. Done. Okay. The transverse process, which I had to double check, is the, the. This is the superior articular facet, and this is the inferior articular facet, right? In other words, I have a stack of vertebra, and the vertebra sit on top of each other. So the superior articular facet of one vertebra articulates with the inferior uh, articular facet of the one on top of it. And that creates a stacking effect where you can have some movement. For example, flexion. Right, we have vertebral flexion because we're able to have this type of movement. Okay, so that's what we see here, and so that's your transverse process there. Okay, so let's let's knock out just the bones. We can get it out of the way. Vertebral artery. This should not surprise you because there's only one artery that you can actually see here. Boom, boom. That's it. I mean, that's it. There's no other artery. It's red. Okay, awesome. Uh, may I see the previous slide? Uh, yes, we'll come back to the same previous slide in just a second. Let's just knock this out and then I'll, we'll go back and people can kind of compare it. Just give me one second. All right. So, um, so, so, uh, dura matter. Now guys, this is tricky. It's not tricky, but it's, it's not necessarily intuitive. Now, dura matter is going to be close to the arachnoid matter. Okay. It is under the fat, not up there. I know that's intuitive to go up there, but it's not that high. It is this, 
the white part. Not even the brown part there, the white part. Because believe it or not, there's a white part, which I'm trying to cover here. That's the dura matter. And then underneath it, or it's actually technically deeper in, underneath there's a gray color. Look. Mm, hold on. You see what I'm doing here? Making this part here the subarachnoid space. And this part up here the epidural space. Yep, red line, red line dura. In other words, the most superficial. And then right next to it, just super uh, deep to it, is going to be the arachnoid. So this one is like you got to really, really look. Now, do your best. And as long as it's clear, I'm going to expect the right thing. But if it's slightly not clear, then I have some leeway. Does that make sense, guys? If you're like, damn, is that arrow pointing to the dura matter or the arachnoid matter, right? Do your best. Okay? But just be careful. Just know that the space above it, it's pretty much fat-laden, is going to be the epidural space up here. Oh, right here. Just above it. Just this kind of fat layer above it. Yep, no problem. And I'm going to go back to the one that I just showed, that I have, that some of it's labeled. And I'll go back in just a second. All right, guys. PM matter, super obvious. It's the white part around the spinal cord. So you can see that right here. Yeah, it's just all the way around there. Super, super obvious. PM matter, no problem. All right. With that being said, again, the epidural space is just going to be the one on top of this, on top of the dura. So again, the dura matter is the white line here. Epidural is going to be here. And then I'm changing colors here. Sorry, guys. And then I'm making the dura matter here red. Sorry. Dura matter is blue. The arachnoid matter deep to it, barely, is going to be red in this in this picture. And I'll show you the picture before in just a second. All right. So let me let me jump to the other image now so that we can kind of look at this. All right. Can you guys see there? So they've, they've labeled it here. It's actually a little bit more. Why does this look fatter than ours? Is it not? Am I blind? Ours looks a little skinnier, doesn't it? That dura matter on this one looks a little bit, a little bit wider. Maybe, maybe. Oh, maybe. Okay, so take your pictures, guys. This is going to help kind of remind you of where we are. Epidural space, dura matter, arachnoid, subarachnoid space. You don't have to worry about that. And then, um, and this one's good for the spinal nerve. It will remind you because you're going to get confused in just a second with that. All right, so everyone, everyone's got their pictures? Okay, we good? We're going to go back. All right. So with that being said, um, we're going to go ahead and just knock out what we know. Now, this can be problematic. Okay. Are you guys ready? Just listen now. Don't do anything. Just listen. Okay. Orienting yourself here can be tricky. Watch. This is the vertebra. This is the vertebra. This is the vertebra. This is the vertebra. So this is the root. This is the root with a, what's called an epineurium, right? Epimysium muscle, epineurium, covering the nerves, right? And then here is a little skinny, skinny, skinny ventral root. Ventral, ventral. No, no, no. And this is the spinal nerve. You guys see that? This is the spinal nerve because I'm going to go back to red. This is the inferior articular. Oh wait. Superior. Ah, inferior articular facet. So anyway, bone. Bone. That's that's what we care about. They don't ask about the facets, right? I just want you to know it's bone, right? So, the blue part is the dorsal root, okay? And then I'm going to erase it and show you again. The blue part is the dorsal root, okay? The black part, and it's very thin comparatively, is the uh, ventral root, okay? Now, the, the, let me see here. That's the back. If that's the back, that's the right, that's the left. So the right side has the epineurium, the, the covering of the 
root and the nerve uncovered. The left side keeps the covering, and that's what gets confusing. In addition to, am I looking at a root, a nerve, or a bone, right? And then again, you have the nerve right there, okay? So, there we go. So, what does that mean? It means the vast majority of the roots are the dorsal. And then you can see the dorsal root ganglion because, oh, I used blue. See this bulbous part here? Do you guys see that? That's the dorsal root ganglion. This one has the epineurium covering it. This one, in this picture, it's like they've removed that covering. All right, guys, be good. You want to take a second to kind of orient yourself around that? And remember, uh, Gloria, go ahead. I'm confused about the nerve. The nerve is a little uh, gray squiggly line. So what the nerve is, right ready? Here. Let me show you. Okay, go ahead. No, actually the nerve is all of this. Watch me. You see that? And that. Because the uh, dorsal root comes into it here. And then the ventral... The, sorry, the dorsal root comes into it, and then the ventral root comes into it like this. You see that? Yeah. So, okay. What's confusing me is I'm expecting to see, like, an exposed nerve, but it's covered. They're both covered. Yes. Okay. So, on the right, they don't uncover it like they do uncover the, the roots. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Does that, does that make sense? No, you're welcome. And what's also confusing is, the, is the, that inferior articular facet, right? That's a bone. We don't ask about that. We don't care about that, right? Now, we do care about this because they do want you to know the transverse process, right? I mean, when I first did it, I was like, oh, I like I had to like seriously like take a minute for this. All right, guys. So that's what's confusing. That, But I would start here. Visually, you can see that bulb. Visually, that would, that's what jumps out. So that's the dorsal root ganglia, right? The whole thing is the dorsal root if we keep going in a little bit. Beside it is a very, very thin, 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 thin ventral root. Thin, thin, thin ventral root covered with epineurium, uncovered. And then lastly, we've got the nerve, which is the same covering on both sides. So that's not uncovered. That's a spinal nerve. That's a spinal nerve. Not that, not that. Okay, guys? All right, let's do it. Um, and then I'll show you one more thing in a second. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, all right. Dors now, they ask for the dorsal root and the dorsal root ganglion together. So that's good. It doesn't matter. They'll probably put an arrow to the dorsal root ganglion. You have to tell them me dorsal root and dorsal root ganglion. All right, guys. Show me dorsal root and dorsal root ganglion because they're together in this image, in the labeling. Go. Both sides, guys. Both sides. You're right. And yes. Good, good, good. Because I don't know which one it's going to be, right? And so you got to get that. Now, where is the very thin ventral root? Watch this, guys. Careful, careful. So, yeah. And we're probably going to go in more, like, it, like away from the thing. But, yes, technically that is the ventral root on both sides. Good, good, good. All right. Not the big line in the middle. <laughs> All right, guys. Good, 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 good. All right. Are you ready? Oh, wait. Do they have it here? Do they even have a spinal nerve? Oh, they do. It's about the one. Okay, ready, guys? Spinal nerve. Spinal nerve. Don't get confused. Yep, the first hand got, has it right. Yes, and all the colored ones has have it right. Good, 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 good. Awesome. So, make your notes on your images. If you have to do a quick drawing, just keep that in mind. Just review that. Now, one more thing. Which is, and again, you've got your central canal, you know, ooh, Rob, you know where that is, right? Central canal, gray matter, white matter, blah, 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 blah. You already know that. What you don't know is up a bit, it's called the sympathetic trunk. Not, not the, the, not the um, vertebral artery, no, this. We're going to see it back in our nervous system images. That is the um, sympathetic trunk right? That's the sympathetic trunk. You with me? All right, guys, circle the sympathetic trunk. 
comes up. So that's the thing. It's a ver- it's a vertical uh, yeah. It's a vertical kind of process, if you will. All right, awesome. Good, 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 good. All right, we got it. Okay, guys, everybody got this one. Okay. Just reminder of the gray horn, white horn. Notice that I didn't even go over that because we just did. You already know that, right? That's the third time. It's the same thing. So you got to knock out. We've got three, we've got four different images, three models and the spinal cord slide where you have to know the same columns, horns, etc. Okay. All right. Let's go, go, go. Spinous process. Oh, did I not say it? Oh, sorry. Oh. Boom. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes I'm just like, man. <laughs> All right, you guys good? That's the spinous process. Just from um, bone markings. Okay. Awesome. That's also going to help you with posterior, right? Because you know that's the back. So then you know that's the posterior median sulcus, the anterior medium fissure. This is going to be the anterior part of everything. This is going to be the posterior part that's lateral. So that helps you as well for this image. Okay, Dominique, you good? Spinous process or circle. All right, Gloria, yes. Just one more time. Can you tell me this? So, this is dorsal. Oh, hold on, you can't see my pointer. I'm sorry. That's okay. So, this is dorsal, and then what is this? That's ventral. 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 So That's dorsal, ventral. ventral. Okay. Perfect. Find the dorsal. You've got the ventral right beside, and it's so tiny. So, you got to be careful. Good questions, guys. All right, awesome. Okay. Uh, guess what? We did all of this and that was like last week. I started with this one because I wanted to start with you there. Okay. So we did all of this. Boom. We're done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back. I'm going to pull up the nervous system one and we're going to knock out the extra under the nervous system model. So we're still on page 150. We're going to do the nervous system models. Uh, those are the ones with just, you know, the nerves. So let me start with this image first. So basically, we're gonna we're just gonna do a quick review of the stuff we've already done. So you already know where the plexuses are, right? We've got cervical, brachial, lumbar, sacral. Now we don't have a thoracic plexus. We've got intercostal nerves, right? And then I'm gonna show you the sympathetic trunk today: conus medullaris, cauda equina, filum terminal, which is new. Uh, sciatic nerve, no problem. We did that before. And then we'll go over the really quickly the the nerves. You already know the radial ulnar median, right? Radial nerve, follow up the thumb. Ulnar nerve, follow up the pinky. Median nerve, between them. And of course, we have the axillary nerve, which is up at the armpit. Femoral sciatic, we talked about that as well, but we'll go ahead and go over it. Now, very quickly, uh, conus medullaris is simply at about L1, and it is the differentiation. It's basically where the spinal cord stops. Okay, and in this case, what you can see right after that is this, these um, kind of this, 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 these. Well, they call it a cauda equina because it looks like a horse tail. So it's all like these kind of, all these kind of dangling axons, right? And that's called the conus medullaris. Now, as the name implies, way down at the sacrum is where we're going to have the filum terminal. Filum is like, like filaments, right? Like a very thin kind of uh, strands. And this would be thin strands of axons. And terminal means, well, at the end. So fill and terminal. This is very straightforward. So just make sure that you're just kind of reviewing it. All right. With that being said, oh, let me do that because I just introduced it. Let me get to a good image. Uh, oh, you know where I think we're going to ask it? Hold on. Here. I think, but you should, we'll, we'll look at the other one. I think we're going to ask it here because look at this model. First of all, look how nice this is. Look at that conus medullaris. You see how that's the spinal cord? Oh, hold on. Um, I thought the film terminal was the extension of the pia mater. Uh, uh, they should be nerves. Anchor to the coccyx. Mm, film terminal. Let's see. Ah, yeah, modification. Except, buffer the nervous cord, caudal traction, conus medullaris. Yeah, so 
Um, it's yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess there's no nerves there. Hmm? Okay, yeah, it's just an extension. Then it's just it just tethers it. Um, I guess yeah. I didn't know there were no nerves in there. The surface of the spinal cord is covered by the PMI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's gonna be down here. Yeah, I didn't know that there was no um, nervous tissue, uh, no nerves there. But um, regardless, it's gonna be at the at the at the the sacrum. So, however, we do have nerves coming out of the sacral and the coccygeal area. So, the, the, let's go back up so that we can start again. So, here the, at L2, we're going to have the conus medullaris because the spinal cord ends there, okay? And then you're going to have the, co the, co the cauda equina here, which should be nerves, but maybe it's not. Let me check what the cauda equina Yeah, those are nerves. <laughs> All right. So the cauda equina is a bundle of nerves that comes down after L2. Okay. And then the terminal, the fill in terminal is down at the sacrum. Okay. Right down here. So we could ask it on another one. So we'll go up and look at it. But I think we're going to ask you here because this is the pretty image. All right. So that was conus medullaris at L2 or where the spinal cord ends, which you can see in this image really nicely. Then the the cauda equina coming off of that area, just underneath the conus medullaris, and then the, the fill and terminal. But you have to be careful, guys, because we still have plexuses down here. So you want to be really careful and focus on where the arrow is, right? Because here we're going to be separating our thoracic, which are going to be intercostal nerves, from the from the abdominal, right? Which are going to be down L2. So you're going to get the conus medullaris, cauda equina, which is here, right? Not here, guys. Do you guys notice that? The, the, the stuff that's off of the spinal cord are plexuses or plexus, right? So you've got to be really, really careful what we're pointing to. Does that make sense? So... What is this area here? What is this area here? Now, we're going to put an arrow there, right? So just watch. If I put an arrow there, what am I pointing to? Am I pointing to the plexus, which would be the lumbar plexus, or am I pointing to the cauda equina? I'm pointing to the cauda equina. So you've got to be careful because the plexus all comes off. They're branching of nerves off of the spinal cord, right? You have to be really careful. And the same goes with the uh, phylum terminal. We're going to be right here at the, we're going to be right down here at the sacrum, which is obviously just superior to the coccyx. And it's going to be the filament part here, okay? But coming off of there, we have the sacral plexus. So please be careful and watch your arrows. If we're going to be pointing to the very kind of the middle part of that, we're looking at something different than if we're pointing at the plexus area coming off of here. You guys see that difference? Okay. Now the difference, of course, is going to be the intercostal because that there are no plexus here, right? You just simply have this parallel, uh, parallel, the parallel running of nerves at the, at the, at the ribs. Okay. All right. That's it. So the only thing we're going to add to that is the sympathetic trunk, which I'm going to show you in the other models as well. Do you guys see this at the side? You guys see this? So we've got the, we've got these bones, the bones kind of images here where they've kind of made up where it looks like they've cut it. And right beside it, lateral to it, we have the sympathetic trunk. Okay, guys? With the costal cartilage. Um, the costal nerve, wait, the, um, hold up. The, da, 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 da. the intercostal nerves are, they run, they run in a horizontal fashion at the, at the ribs. So, the ribs have arteries and veins that run like right by them. And it's really to innervate the chest muscles. So it's actually not on the cartilage. It's going to be running across at the ribs in a, in a parallel fashion to innervate the muscles of the, the chest. 
Does that make sense, Shannon? Because remember, the, the cartilage is where the, the rib attaches to before that cartilage attaches to the sternum. All right. So, guys, circle for me or make some lines at the cartilage. Make a line at the, at the conus medullaris. There's only one place for this. Go right a little bit. It's a little bit down, but yeah, that area, right? Now, it's basically a line. Remember, the conus medullaris is basically a demarcation, right? So it's like this, right? But we'll put an arrow there just to the middle. Now, make some lines at the cauda equina, like make it kind of going down like a horse's tail, like fibers. That's right. And keep it there in the midline. Keep it at the midline. Good. Because that's going to be a difference between the... I don't want you to get confused between the cauda, uh, the cauda equina and the, the lumbar plexus, right? Because they're in the same area. Okay. And then give me some branching off of the uh, the, ter, uh, the phylum terminal. And you got to go low. That's right. But you got to be careful. Still stay kind of in the midline because you've got a sacral plexus there, which is the branching off of the spinal cord. Of course, there's no spinal cord here, but y'all know what I'm saying. Off of the midline, maybe is a better way. Okay, awesome. Now, circle the sympathetic trunk. Yeah. Uh, now, that's the bone. Guys, watch, watch, watch. In, in case we have the right one. Uh, I'm going to put a line down it. Ready? Yes, whoever's got the white line. Yes, so watch. It's not the bone part. It's the part beside it. Okay. Yes, that's good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Right? So, and again, uh, you've got the intercostal nerves. You've got the brachial plexus here. You can't see any more here. You've got the, here you've got the lumbar plexus, right? It's coming off there. Or we can put a bracket, right, for the lumbar plexus coming off of, away from the spinal cord. All right, awesome. Now let's go back up here and kind of fit some of that together. Okay, um, so uh, the right image, you can't actually see the left, there's no sympathetic trunk. Oh, there's some weird thing, we wouldn't ask. On the right image though, show me the, the sympathetic trunk. There, it's very obvious. Yes, no, not the spinal cord, guys. Don't go right the middle. Yes, that's the sympathetic trunk. Perfect, perfect. All right, awesome. Now, uh, show me where the cervical plexus is, just because we're here and it's on my li our list. That's it. So not the spinal cord, but the, the branching just right lateral to the spinal cord. Exactly. Now, show me the, the brachial plexus. Now, remember, we did this a couple weeks ago. That's right. Now, don't go too low, guys. This is where we're going to go. We're going to go here. Hold on. Let me do it, guys. We're going to go, we're going to go he, about here. You see that? Right? For the, for the brachial plexus. Yeah, because it's like, what is it? C4 or C5 to like T2-ish? And then, of course, it branches off to the arm. So, yes, it feeds into the arm. Absolutely. But the plexus itself, where it kind of, where we designated the plexus, originates there. Perfect. All right. Uh, show me where the auxiliary nerve is because you can see it in this image. And I would stick with the right, but technically it could be either. Basically, just find the nerve at the armpit. Yeah, right. We only have one nerve that we're going to be asking you for, and it's going to be at the armpit, auxiliary. Good, good, good. Uh, intercostal. Intercostal. Any of those, right or left side, any of those. Just be careful, not the one going, it's not vertical, the, the sympathetic uh, trunk, it's horizontal. All the way down, boom, 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 boom. Okay, all right, awesome. And then, all right, let's keep going. That is what we have. Let me make sure I've kind of covered stuff here. Okay, let's go ahead and knock out what we've done before. All right, now in this image, on, well, hold on, I don't want it labeled. All right, in this image, you can see the ulnar nerve and the median nerve. Where's the ulnar nerve? Yes, pinky, pinky, pinky. Follow the pinky up. Good. Median nerve. Yep, right there, right there. Perfect. Now, where is the image with the radial nerve? Ah, here, here, on the on our right. Yeah, technically, but we'd want to go down more, so we'd want the one on the right. Yeah. So you're gonna find the thumb on the, exactly. You're gonna find the thumb there. Ah, that. 
That one's tr I wouldn't go, don't go this side because it gets really weird and tricky, guys. Be careful. Because yes, we are following the thumb, so technically, but I would stick with this one where we've got the palm one out. Yes. The circular red one is, is, the, is the radial nerve. Awesome. So we've done cervical, brachial. All right, guys, lumbar plexus. Lumbar plexus. Yeah, that's a little bit big. Watch, guys. Watch. We're going to be about here. Okay? Because remember, that's the coccyx, right? So we can't go too far down. We can't go too far because, watch. Ready, guys? Sacral plexus. See what I'm saying? All right. And, okay, tell me where the femoral nerve is. Follow it from the lumbar plexus if you're not sure. Can you go back a slide after this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's sciatic. Red person, you got sciatic. Blue person, you got sciatic. I want femoral. Go up to the lumbar. Yeah, you're going to follow it. Now, technically the green is, but it's the it's the circumflex. So it, the femoral is all of the, the, the colors that most people are doing. So let me show you. Femoral is this one here. Wait, hold on. Femoral is this one here, right? This is one of the, this is a deep femoral, so we don't want that one. And then here, remember, coming from the lumbar, it's going to go down like that. Right, guys? Because femoral comes from the lumbar plexus. Now, with that being said, where's the sciatic? It's from behind, but then you just follow it back up to the, uh, to the sacral. That's it. Right? Yes, either one, guys. They can ask you on either side. That's why it's so good to remember it comes up from the sacral. See this? Watch. See this? Boom, sciatic. Why? Lumbar. Boom, sciatic. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry, I'm going to erase it because I can't see it. Yeah, yeah. Now, it comes behind, which is nice, right? Sciatic. But guess what, guys? Femoral. You see that? You got to be careful on the right side. The left side is kind of easy because they, they show you it very clearly in the front at the femur for the femoral and in the back at the sciatic. But when in doubt, follow it back up. If it goes to the sacrum, it's sciatic. If it goes up a little bit more, it's to the lumbar, it's the femoral. Femoral equals over the leg bone. Exactly, exactly. But, Jennifer, word to the wise, the left side is easier to see that than the right side. So if you get a right side, in other words, here's the right, here's the left. This guy is sometimes tricky because see this guy here? That's a sciatic. And it kind of looks like it's coming front, doesn't it? Right? So it's a little bit jankster. So the left side, super easy front and back. You're absolutely right. Exactly. Right, left side here. Right, right side, left side. Super easy. See the back and front. What do we mean? That's, this one here is behind the bone. You can tell. Boom, sciatic. This one here in front. Boom, femoral. But you get over here and all of a sudden you're like, eh. Femoral works, but sciatic looks a, a little bit janky. Gangster. <laughs> it is what it is, people. <laughs> Crazy bacon. <laughs> so, yes, left side is a lot easier to recognize that. When in doubt, go back up. The femoral goes up to the lumbar sacrum. Uh, pff, the lumbar plexus. The sciatic goes from the, the sacral plexus. All right, guys? So, again... It doesn't hurt just to kind of reinforce that. All right, awesome. So we covered everything. Everything. We covered everything there. The only thing is there's a there's a coccygeal nerve. I don't know what that is. I mean, I don't know. Hold on. I'm going to do a quick search. I may have to tell it to you when we come back. I don't want to spend too much time. I'm looking on coccygeal. Oh, wow. I can't spell coccygeal. <laughs> Nerve and label model. I'm going to check really quickly. If I can't find it super fast, then I'm not. I'll do it when we come back. Other than that, we've covered everything. All right, give me a model.
Nope, I'm going to have to do it when we come back, okay, guys? So coccygeal nerve is up for grabs, which I have to do. That's under the spinal cord and brain. Um, the pons, spinal cord, straightforward in any of the models. Anterior medium fissure, anterior ventral root, dorsal root, ganglion has to be a model that has a spinal cord. Uh, conus medullaris, we went over that. Dura matter, went over that. Cauda equina, and then the cranial nerves, we did that last time with the brain. The only thing I have to cover is the coccygeal nerve, and then we went over all the other ones. So we're done with that, okay? I did not find a hanging spinal model. All right, guys. So we're done 19. Do you guys want to take a five-minute break or no?